Welcome back, everybody, to Talking With Heroes. I am Bob Calvert, your host, www.talkingwithheroes.com and www.thankyouforyourservice.us. Uh, Ted, behind the camera. And we're still here at Camp Eggers in Kabul, Afghanistan, on a NATO training mission, Afghanistan base. And we're here now with Lieutenant Commander Jonathan Orr. Welcome back to Talking With Heroes. I know we talked a little bit earlier. Um, if you could tell people a little bit about yourself, how long you served, and where you're from. Sure, Bob. I'm glad to have you guys here with NTMA. Uh, we're really the heart and soul of the transition here. I have been here for about a month now. Um, I have been in the Navy Reserves for over 10 years. It'll be 11 years in January of next year. And um, I am from Richmond, Virginia. I am the Public Affairs Officer here at NTMA. Okay. Uh Talk about the reserves a little bit, um, because yes, you're not full-time military, so you have to go back and have a job or a business to go back to a hope? Absolutely, yeah. No, I have a civilian job. I work up in D.C. I'm actually from uh, Richmond. I commute up to D.C. fairly frequently for my job. Uh, but, yeah, the reserves is a real challenge. You really have two jobs or three if you put your family into it. I obviously uh, have a wife. I'm married. I have uh, two little kids. So um, you effectively have two full-time jobs. And for those of us who deploy... Um, it's a big sacrifice to not only leave your family, everybody leaves their family, but for reservists, you wind up actually uh, leaving your job behind, too. So unlike taking your job with you, which is what a lot of active duty do, um, we leave ours behind. So not only do you have some concerns about what's going to happen when you go back, um, but you also tend to keep up with what's going on, too. So you don't have two full-time jobs anymore, but I still certainly keep an ear to the ground and, and try to stay on top of what's going on. Okay. Talk about what you do here as commander. Sure. Well, not the commander. Uh, lieutenant commander, I'm sorry. <laughs> As a lieutenant commander, I'm, I'm the public affairs officer for NATO training mission in Afghanistan. Uh, we are the command that uh, handles and manages all the training for uh, the ANP, the Afghan National Police, and the Afghan National Army, uh, as well as some other activities and programs that we sponsor. Uh, my job as public affairs officer is to do things like this, to do interviews, to talk with the media, to deal with embedded media, um, to respond to media queries. We also do a good bit of our own public affairs work in terms of stories. Uh, we have a very active social media program uh, and a website that we run. That's really our, our uh, uh, window to the world. So it's a very busy job. Uh, we're typically working seven days a week, almost always, um, generally about 12 to 13 hours a day. Um, but it's a lot of fun. I have a good crew here. I have about 14 that I manage. Um, so it's been a good experience. So you're seeing progress being made as far as the training program? I think absolutely. Now, I don't deal directly with the training, so I'm, I'm not the best guy to, to query about that, but I think absolutely NTMA has done a marvelous job here. NTMA used to be something called C-Sticka, and that was really a, a largely American activity since General Caldwell, who's the commanding general, started. Uh, it's really taken on a, a, a much bigger um, uh, function, and it's also become much more international. We have 33 contributing nations here and do an enormous amount of work. Our real focus is training the Afghans to have an independent uh, security force, which is both the police and the Army and the Air Force, actually. Um, there's a, quite a robust Air Force training program out at uh, Kabul International Airport as well. And we have really transitioned um, recently from a basic training role to really train the trainers. What we want to do is ensure that the Afghans once the coalition has left, are able to continue the progress and train themselves so that they can maintain their own military and security forces. That's uh, a mistake that was made in the past with the Soviets. They, they built up a great military, but they didn't have the capacity uh, once they left to maintain it. And so what we are emphasizing is building leadership capacity within the Afghan National Security Forces themselves so that they can take on that role. And once the coalition has, has stepped back during transition and is not directly involved, or at some point in the future when they're out of the country altogether, that they are able to maintain their, their, their security forces and have a really robust security. Well, we really appreciate um, short notice, uh, everything you've put together today. We've really talked to a lot of great people. Great, good. I'm glad you were here. I know we got to see some great things today. 
uh, it's a Friday during Ramadan, so uh, this is the Muslim Sunday. Mm-hmm. Uh, people are typically not working. It's usually a later day for us. So I'm sorry you weren't able to see more of the actual training, but you were able to get a mm-hmm. sense of, of what people were doing, have a chance to talk with some of the folks out at uh, Camp Eggers, and then see some beautiful scenery at the, the Queen's Palace. Yeah. Well, possibly early next year we'll see the training and bring that back to America too. Absolutely. I hope so. You know, really, we that's why we're here is to let people know what we're doing. I think um, – the things that go boom tend to get a lot more press and play. And so you hear from um, the ISAF Joint Command, they're the folks who run the operations here a lot more typically than you hear from NTMA. But as I say, we're really kind of the heart of the transition here because you can continue to fight the insurgency. We've pretty much um, beaten them into the ground to a certain extent, uh, but that can just go on and on and on. The real future here is ensuring that the Afghans themselves can maintain their own security. That's what transition is all about. In 2014, we're not going to be gone. What it means is that the Afghans are going to be fully in control of their own security. The only way they can do that is if they have really robust security forces themselves. So NTMA is a critical part of that, and and we have people here who do an absolutely amazing job. It's really incredible to get out to, for example, the Afghan National Police Academy and see the work that they do, but also see the international flavor for it. Uh, We were there recently for a visit with Admiral Mullen who came and visited, and um, there are German trainers, there are Canadian trainers, there are French trainers, there are Dutch trainers. This really is the United Nations of of a training program and a United Nations of command, so uh, it's incredible to see that. It's not just an American face, it's an Afghan face, Mm -hmm. it's a Dutch face, it's a French face, it's a Canadian face. Yeah, that's great. What about care packages? Are you getting them from home or any organizations? Uh, you know, there are, I, I know there are folks who've had care packages that just kind of come out of the blue. I think there are programs like that. I've never gotten one myself. I'm not sure mm-hmm. how you sign up for that. Uh, USO here always has, or not USO, MWR always has a lot of stuff that, that uh, people donate. So you can just go into their office and sort of get random things that they have. But my uh, company back home has been very generous. They sent me four very large boxes of, of gifts and basically snacks, uh, juice, instant coffee, that sort of thing. Um, the individual juice packets, to me, are, are one of the things I look forward to the most because we have an endless supply of bottled water, but yeah. bottled water gets pretty tedious after a while. So uh, the juice packages um, and the Starbucks single serve instant coffee is really it's what's kept me going for a number of months now. Okay. Well, email me with your APO address, and I wouldn't be surprised if some of the people watching this right now that are with support groups are going to ask for your APO address. Great. That'd be wonderful. We always welcome it. And, 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 you know, what I can't use or what I don't, I don't need everything. I will certainly pass out to all the deserving troops here. We've got a great team in the public affairs office, and I know they would all appreciate it. Anything that anybody could send from home. Okay. Why don't you look at the camera and give a shout out to family and friends back home? Sure. Yeah. I just wanted to say hello to family and uh, loved ones back home, particularly my wife, Kara, and my two beautiful sons, uh, Flynn and Reese. Thank you. Thank you very much sure. for your service to our country. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yep. Once again, folks, you've been hearing it here from Kabul, Afghanistan at Camp Eggers on TalkingWithHeroes.com. I want to thank again Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University for making this trip possible. It's EmbryRiddle.edu and Mark Leiden, who introduced me to Embry-Riddle at DoThisGetHired.com. So we'll be back with more from here at Camp Eggers on TalkingWithHeroes.com. Welcome back, everybody, to another edition of Talking With Heroes talk show program. I am Bob Calvert, your host. Ted is behind the camera. We're on TalkingWithHeroes.com, and thank you for your service, .us. Uh, We're still here at Camp Eggers in Kabul, Afghanistan, and uh, we've been uh, looking forward to meeting some of the the troops from other countries who are here, and so it's an honor to to welcome you to Talking With Heroes. If you could introduce yourself, uh, where you're from, how long you've served. Certainly. My name is Flight Lieutenant Katie Muldoon. I've been in the Air Force six and a half years, and I'm from Edinburgh in Scotland. From Scotland, great. Now, uh, Lieutenant. Yes. Talk about it. Um, Yeah, it's just our little way in Britain of pronouncing it, but uh, around about here, I'm known as Lieutenant Muldoon. I'll say Lieutenant. Thank you. Okay. So you are uh, you just been here, just got here a little while ago? That's right, yeah. This is my third tour of Afghanistan uh, in three years, um, but I've been here four weeks. Excellent. Glad you told me that. 